everyone and welcome back to another video from my channel Hydrochem Mud Railway. Today we're doing a bit of an experiment. Which is faster at boiling water, this kettle or this Zanussi induction hob? First of all, why am I making this video in the first place? Well, I just think it's an interesting experiment because as I've come to realise, we had a gas hob previously, but now we've got an induction hob, it's way more efficient and it's a lot faster because instead of having flames under the pan and relying on convection to put the heat into the pan, the heat is actually generated directly in the bottom of the pan. I mean, I probably will make a video about this at some point, but for today, all you need to know is, is that an induction hob is more efficient and the heat is actually generated in the pan itself rather than a heat source just been below the pan and also because we the way we have you know prepared boiling water for cooking food before was boiling water in a kettle and then putting it in the pan well what we've been doing because the induction hob is so much faster at boiling you know many liters of water than a gas hob we've actually just been putting water straight in the pan and boiling it on the hob whereas before we would have actually filled up the kettle boiled the kettle and then put the water from the kettle into the pan so i just think it's an interesting experiment to see which is better you know a hob that's designed for cooking food or a kettle which is purely designed for um, you know heating and boiling water now I think it's important to mention turning the switch off is that obviously there are some differences this kettle for instance um, is a 20 well it's an 1850 to 2200 watt kettle and it's a lot obviously a lot less powerful than the induction hob because on max setting on the big rings on the hob on the p setting which is power for a boost or boiling water that can give a maximum three kilowatts but i don't think the sort of 800 watt difference is going to make much of a difference and i'll tell you why now so the reason why i don't think it'll matter is because obviously an induction hob although being much more efficient than a gas hob, is not going to be 100% efficient. Because for a start, we are relying, if I actually get the lid, we are going to use a lid um, to make sure it is as much of a sealed container as possible. Obviously, there's holes in the lid, and they mean there's a hole in the kettle, but um, the lid isn't going to seal as well as a kettle lid. It's quite a loose fit. Uh, it's obviously got to heat up the pan, whereas the kettle, although the outer shell of the kettle doesn't really get warm, uh, there's just an element in the bottom of the kettle heating the water in the kettle, whereas, you know, this is still heating the bottom of the pan, but it's actually heating the metal and then the stuff in the pan rather than just heating the water like you would in a kettle. Uh, and obviously it's got to heat up the mass of the pan as well. Uh, along with the water and it's very heavy metal and also I don't think the difference will make much difference is because this you know whoops I'm gonna drop the lid on the floor this is the cooking area um, of an induction hob and when you're cooking you know you might have a pan big enough to completely cover it um, some of the edges of the white lines here are still visible when this pan is in the center I do have a massive casserole pan but that's not going to be realistic when you're boiling water for pasta on the stove you're not going to get a massive casserole pan to boil you know a packet of pasta you may have some of the cooking area exposed um, and obviously if you have some cooking area exposed that means the magnetic fields of the solid might have escaped around the pan and obviously you're going to lose some power that way and the transfer of energy from the electric well magnetic fields coming and the electric fields coming from the hob um, this is not going to be 100 percent efficient into going into here some of it you know will be turned into sound and uh, other wasted energies so that's why i don't really think the 800 watt difference between the max power output of this hob and the uh, max power up power output of the kettle is going to matter so we shall fill them up both with 1.7 liters of water because that's how much water i can fit in the kettle max and we shall see which one can boil first the hob or the kettle so I'm going to be using the kettle as a measuring device rather than the jug because it's just easier. And if I'm filling the pan up with the same scale on the kettle and the kettle up with the same scale, uh, scale on the kettle, it's obviously going to be a bit more accurate. Uh, so they're both definitely filled up to the same amount. I should say this isn't the usual kettle we use in our kitchen. We do have a coppery coloured one. The problem with it being coppery coloured is that obviously it shows my face and I don't show my face on the video. So that's why we're using this one instead. Uh, the other kettle is 2900 watts. 2.9 kilowatts so a lot closer to what the hob is rated at max power whereas i've explained i really don't think it'll matter so we're actually going to put this water in the pan and then we'll fill the kettle up again to the exact 1.7 litre mark and we can begin the test 
I do apologise if the light level keeps changing. I have got some lights on in the kitchen, but obviously with it being sunny and then getting cloudy outside, that is going to change it. Anyway, we have the exact same 1.7 litres of water from the kettle. This is room temperature. It's straight out of the tap. The same 1.7 litres you saw just a few seconds ago. And that is going into the kettle. Make sure to get every last drop. And now I'm going to fill the kettle up again to 1.7 litres and then we can begin the test. So the kettle has been refilled exactly up to 1.7 litres. Now because the induction hob actually has a delay when it kicks in, you can turn it on and press P for max power, but there's actually sort of three or four second delay before it does give it the beans. Um, and I know this because you can actually hear it start buzzing. There's a pause when you press the power level and then it goes and you can actually hear it. So when I hear that noise, I'll run over and flick on the kettle because if I, you know, start the kettle when I've pressed the button on the hob, the hob won't have actually started turning on and providing heat to the pan. So as soon as I hear the hob go I'll run over and knock the kettle on and that way we can ensure it's a fair test. Obviously we know the kettle has reached boiling point when it clicks off at around 100 degrees because it's not going to be completely pure water. I will put a thermometer in the pan so we can see when it gets to very close to 100. Um, it's probably not going to boil exactly at 100, it may be slightly more or slightly less because it's not pure water, it will have minerals and impurities and salts in it. Um, so when that thermometer doesn't increase anymore on the pan we know it's got to boiling point rather than me just saying oh yeah that's vigorous bubbling bubbling that's boiling it will get to a certain temperature and then stop as the uh, change of state happens but i'll not get into all the physics stuff of that so for now we can actually begin the test i'll switch over to the webcam so you can see both things at once and let's see which wins the kettle or the induction hob i think this is going to be very interesting So the hob and the kettle are on, as you can see, I turned both on at exactly the same time. Make sure you can see the thermometer, currently 17.7. I've put it roughly in the centre of the water uh, and I've stuck it down with a bit of blue tap and put the lid on top so it's a sealed vessel as much as possible. So we've got some fizzing over here. Kettle currently not doing very much. It is on. And things may be about to get very noisy in here. This will keep two minutes to off off. Let's put it back on again. Put it at 34 degrees. The kettle's not started making noises yet. I will be putting a timer up in the editor. Kettle is just starting to hiss now. Got some bubbles up the side, I think. I mean, I could check by opening the lid and seeing inside, but that would be a bit stupid because it would ruin the test. The hob, I think, has slowed down a little bit now. We're at 50 degrees halfway. Come on, kettle, we need you to win. So it seems to have shot off just the hob, it does seem to be slowing down. Oh no, it's speeding up again. 60 degrees on the hob. Kettle seems to be coming to life now. Come on, kettle. I don't know why I want the kettle to win. I want the induction hob to win. It's more fun. 71 degrees. Okay, we're getting some bubbling now. Severe bubbling going on over here. Let's see. As soon as this reaches near 100, I'm going to click it off and we'll see when the kettle clicks off. Quite a lot of bubbling on both now. I think the induction hob is definitely bubbling more. 
can turn the kettle around so you can see when it flips up. There you go. Okay, we're at 80 degrees. I'm expecting to get, well, very close to 100, maybe about 99, I think, because it won't be pure water. And also the thermal couple for the uh, thermometer won't be the best. And I don't want to melt my thermometer, that'd be bad. 88 degrees on the hob. Kettle is coming to life now. 92. 93.9. 95. 95 degrees we're at. 97.1. 97.8. 98.5. 99.2. And 99.8. Not going to get any hotter than that. The induction hob is the winner. I shall leave the kettle on to see where we get to. Because I'm going to have a cup of tea after this. So the induction hob is the winner by a fair margin. You'll get to see in the edit uh, how much of a margin that is. So, um, yeah, I think in conclusion, while we wait for the kettle to finish boiling, the induction hob is definitely faster, um, at least for small volumes of water. Because obviously it's finished what I presume will be about a minute earlier. For small volumes of water, it's obviously a lot faster. Uh, but for a larger kettle, a more powerful kettle, uh, with more volume, the kettle may win. And to be honest, I'd expect it to win on larger volumes of water. And as I said, this kettle does have 800 watts less than the hob. But I did expect the hob to be much faster anyway. Uh, just because it is a lot more powerful than the kettle. It's on a 32 amp circuit, not a 13 amp plug socket like the kettle is. Kettle is just coming up to the boil now. And I'm going to have a cup of tea. That's my mug, by the way. So, yeah, maybe with a more powerful kettle that is closer to the rating of the maximum power output of the main ring on power on the hob, maybe a kettle, you know, would be faster. But in this test, with the equipment I've got, the, uh, the kettle was much slower probably around 45 seconds, a minute slower, um, and the hob did win, so maybe with larger volumes of water so the kettle does prevail, uh, maybe with a more powerful kettle it does prevail, but at least in, these, in this test scenario uh, the kettle did lose and the hob did win, which to be fair I, I did think the hob was going to win, so yeah, actually keeping it heat quite nicely there, 97.1, so I'm going to have a cup of tea. So, thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed this little test. It's certainly been very interesting to actually conduct a sort of little bit of a scientific test. Uh, not something I've done before and I've quite enjoyed it to be honest. Um, so yeah, at least for past the quantities of water, because that pan is, you know, full to the sort of level I would have it at for boiling pasta. I'd definitely say for boiling pasta, still with an induction hob, uh, well not still, with an induction hob you're best boiling it uh, in the pan. But obviously if you're on a gas hob, boil it in the kettle because I have boiling water on the gas hob for pasta with a kettle before and it has taken an absolute eternity. So that has been this video, kettle versus induction hob, something I've been do wanting to do for a very long time and uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go and have my cup of tea now.